Hey guys, what's happening? So, finally got one of these little mini dial indicators. Um, pretty cool, it wasn't expensive, kind of Amazon. It was like, I bought, bought them separately, because I needed a metric. Um, it wasn't expensive, like it's $20 for the stand, and like 23 for this one. I got the little bit better one, so it supposedly has jewels. So I'm guessing it probably has rubies in there. But I need to uh, adjust the tram, even though I had been a tramming tool. Um, in one of my other videos, I was doing a face operation, and when you do face operation, that's when you really see all your issues. Um, like my bed is not straight here, so I had to go back and I need to adjust it. So this is a little magnetic base. Um, they actually do make bigger, like a uh, twisty things. And if you're not familiar with one of these things, and you have a 3018 CNC, well, that was originally a 3018 CNC. Um, this allows you to adjust it. I need to find a magnetic spot to, on my uh, Z-axis and go back and forth. And I gotta clean it all up. I gotta vacuum up all the chips. But uh, all right, so pretty cool. Not expensive. And what's funny is, since I started out in 3D printing, uh, all my 3D printing and CNC stuff I think in metric. But like when I'm doing construction stuff and like uh, doing wood or wood framing or whatever, I think in American inches and feet. You know, so. <laughs> So you can always tell like the metric stuff is because the, the you typically will have a yellow dial. So, all right, well I'm gonna clean this up and we'll do some uh, tramming, test tramming. All right, so the goal of this thing is to have it so the needle doesn't move when it's going back and forth. Let me show you that real fast. That's horrible. So I have a zero kind of at the center. Right there, then it goes down. That's pretty bad. <laughs> it's horrible. Uh, yeah, it's evident in my facing operations. I feel like it's about a millimeter or half a millimeter down. Because I had to actually put a shim on this thing to straighten up the tram a little bit. But, uh, you know, with my tramming tool I designed. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm going to take out that shim and see if I can. Uh, makes any difference. Well, if you're new to my channel and you're wondering, this is not your ordinary 3018. I designed this uh, chip containment system and all this Mach 3 stuff. But so what I did, I designed some shims, you know, 3D printed some shims out. And originally had this one millimeter in there. So I went back to stock. And um, because I was trying, I'm still trying to get this spindle lined. So um, yeah, I just took the shim out. We'll see. We'll do another test on it and see if it made any difference. But I already have another shim that's this is one millimeter, this is half a millimeter. Alright, so I realize that this is a 3018 and it's not gonna be perfect. Plus I have a lot of 3D printed parts on it, so um do that again. So it definitely improved by removing the shim. We're talking okay, this this scale is 0 0.01 millimeter. <laughs> At least it goes, doesn't go back the other way. Oh, I just hit my wall here. I mean, another simpler way, if you don't want to deal with all the high-tech tools, is just to get a thing right across it and see how the gap gets bigger. Use a feeler gauge to get underneath it and go back and forth to see which side's higher or lower. Like the right side still looks a little bit low or uh, higher. I can see the gap getting smaller. And then I gotta go back and change the, the shim if I go back to the other side. Then I can I'll, I can see that there's I mean I don't know if you can see that in the picture or not, but the this is tighter than it is over here. Um so originally I thought I'd have to do a uh I'm actually gonna have to print another one out. Um because actually I thought I had to go smaller, but I actually have to build a bigger shim in here to make this go out. A little bit more. Huh. Yeah, because if I went smaller, it'd actually bring it in tighter. So, yeah, like I said, this with wood, you're not going to really notice it with wood, but when you start doing aluminum, dude, look at that. I mean, it's, I mean, the whole thing was off. You can see that ridge right there because it was cutting in and it was doing a face operation, then I could see cut in like that right there. 
the, net, the, the bridge is actually going this way. The ridge is this way, you know? And that's actually what this is. I mean, it's, it's very minute, you know, but I can feel it, you know? All right, so I'm getting this thing dialed in. So I went up a little bit too high on this side now. So I made like a paper thin, like little 0.2 millimeter shim here. So we're talking tiny and a little paper thin thing here. Just enough to get in there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm a little OCD. <laughs> so I wish you could get down and see it, but there we go. So we're talking right, it's basically like right on the thing that, that last scratch was when I was up 0.13. So 0.2 or point, yeah, 0.2 millimeter was a sweet spot. Yeah, it's like right on all the way. Okay, so I want to verify, but I still might, I mean, that even looks per perfect this way too. So, I don't know if you can see that or not. Maybe I can zoom in here. It's gonna be kind of rough through that glass right there. We're talking like, I mean, it's like perfect. But the thing is, once you start going on the metal, it's gonna want to push up like that. So, but you want your, you'll find out once you start doing this. <laughs> you have a little, even though these are like more micro ridges, like I could probably just sand those out, but um, it's more than I want, so. But the main thing is I wanted to get it flat so it wasn't going down on an angle like that. So um, let me hook up my little gauge again here. We'll do another test. All right, so I'm hooking my gauge up. I mean, there, there's such, even variations in this bed. We'll make it move around, make it jump. Let's try that again. Huge difference. Yeah, now that's acceptable. I mean, for a 3018, <laughs> this isn't like a cast iron CNC machine. A lot of 3D printed parts here, so I'm very happy with that. All right, guys, put a link down below if you want that thing. Um, all right, yeah, pretty happy with that. So, do another face operation. So, I'm making another video about my face operation for my. This is actually a Dana 20 uh, cover plate. Um, that I'm building, I'm making a video bar video about. So I'm gonna be. This will actually become that. So if you're interested in that, watch my next videos coming up. Get that going. All right. So cool.